Good work, Jim. Yeah. We ran his prints through MOD's computer. His name was Jimmy Casper. He liked sailing, squash, and assaulting officers. Spent seven years in army prisons. Dishonorable discharge, April 1983. Well, I don't suppose you'll lose any sleep over it. I should have said I was a cop. It wouldn't have made any difference. I don't suppose he liked policemen any better. So, now we only have Big Ben. We'll get him. Soon, I hope, because now he's on his own. He's more dangerous than ever. I assume you've tried the clubs. Clubs? I gather he sometimes works in one of those strip clubs down near the docks as a bouncer. But I don't know which one. Well, good to see you both again. Oh, Harriet. Could I have a word? I'll wait in the car. Sir? You don't like me, do you? Does it matter? Well, I'm used to it. I think you're being a bit hard on Jim, though. He's used to it. Do you mind some advice? A man like Jim relies on his instincts, Harriet. Now, while they're intact, he functions efficiently. But once he's made to question them, once he's made to doubt them, you damage him more than you could know. You damage him, and you endanger him. He's a machine, you see, a killer. I think I know Dempsey rather better than you do. I hope so, for his sake. trouble. I don't play with cheats. You better go, mate. Mr. Sparakis has called the law. It's my day off. You're on today. Yeah, I know. And you're gonna have to bounce me. See, make peace. Hot cat club. Sounds like your man. I hate to miss a good party. It's all right, Mr. Edwards. Police can't touch me, cos I work for you. I can't protect you from this, Ben. 
You were an informant. That's all you were. That's all you ever were. You're not James Bond. Nobody licensed you to kill. I, I didn't mean to kill him. It's my error as much as yours. We done another job yesterday. Oh, I was going to tell you. <laughs> it's a bit late now. Yeah. What happens now then, Miss Herbert? I'll give myself up. No, don't do that. Do you have uh, any place you can go for a while? Some place you can go till this blows over? Yeah, my mum's. Yeah. Good. You go there, and I'll tell you when it's safe. Oh. Did you ever see this man before? He's the one done Jimmy. Soldier, isn't he? Police. S.I. 10. A very highly trained and ruthless man. If he finds you, he won't give you any more chance than he gave Jimmy. I, I ain't scared of him. No, I didn't think you would be somehow, but... If you do ever come across him, remember what I said. See you, Mum. Look, I got you some stuff. What you pinch this time? The crown jewels? <laughs> you shouldn't have come here. I, I don't like you living here, Mum. It ain't safe. Oh, no one bothers me. They all know who you are. <laughs> we'll find it. All right. Hey, Edwards, nice work. Ding dong. He knows where Ben is. The apartment black and whopping. Seems his mama's boy came home for tea. You coming or what? Just you and me? He said no cavalry. Don't want to scare a big guy off. You want to tell me? You're going to make a production out of it. What? Your theory. You got theory written all over your face. Just questions. Let's hear them. Well, question number one you know already. How come Edwards always delivers the buyers and never the suppliers? You answer it. OK, simple. Edwards knows about every raid in advance because he knows who they sell it to, because he's got someone inside. He's running one of them. Ben. I mean, he's already told us why. Edwards admits he's a maverick. Results are all he cares about. So he lets Ben and his gang run, and they lead him to terrorist organizations. And he delivers the organizations to his MI5 boss, and voila, he's the golden-haired boy. All right, let me guess question number two. Why is Edwards leading us to Ben? Not us, you. Ben's become an embarrassment? And he wants Ben dead, and he thinks you're a killer. What do you think? 